Hello everyone and welcome to a video where I will be sharing some very disturbing news that shook the chess world at its core. Uh, Magnus Carlsen is retiring from chess, not only from professional chess but also from chess in general. Now why this is so? Well, uh, we uh, to, to really understand this we have to go back a few days. Uh, not, uh, a few days ago Magnus Carlsen posted a photo on his Instagram page. Uh, this is the photo that he posted. Uh, he was sort of chilling in the sun meditating in front of the Karlsruhe Palace in Germany uh, where of course the, uh, the Grenke chess classic tournament uh, uh, is happening every year uh, and it's a bit of a, a grainy photo this is the palace actually so you can check it out if, if you don't know uh, but here uh, while 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 it's chilling he was approached by a certain gentleman wearing a hoodie and the gentleman recognized Magnus and uh, inquired as uh, if he was the the uh, current uh, world chess champion Magnus replied yes this is me uh, and this gentleman uh, asked Magnus if he's interested in one game of chess uh, where if Magnus wins uh, the hooded gentleman will donate one million dollars to charity but if Magnus loses Magnus must resign from chess and Magnus thought this was uh, very funny and he uh, well, uh, he didn't play chess that day. He thought it would uh, uh, be a, a very interesting challenge for him. Maybe even, uh, you know, maybe he could uh, have some fun. And he was uh, very interested in who this person was. But he couldn't really see because the hoodie was uh, really all over his face. Uh, so it was more of a... Um, I don't know how, how to put it more like uh, maybe, maybe as if a Sith Lord approached you. Uh, but Magnus said, yeah, sure, let's play a game. And uh, they, they went into the New York Park. Uh, they put up a chessboard and they started playing this game. And it's uh, it's one of the greatest games I've ever seen. So let's first check out the game and then see uh, wh what happened. Uh, so Mr. MD here. And notice that I'm not wearing a hoodie, which means that our mysterious hoodie guy uh, might not be so mysterious. So uh, let's see what happens here. Uh, for, for the moment, MD opens with E4. Uh, we have E5 by Magnus, Knight F3, Knight to C6, and now Bishop to C4. Uh, Magnus plays Bishop to C5. He wants to check if... Uh uh, Mr. Hoodie Guy here watches my channel, uh, or rather, will he go for the Evans Gambit? Uh, and indeed, he did. He played b4 here, and Magnus was very happy about this. He saw that uh, the, the Evans Gambit is on the board, and he happily accepted the challenge. He played Bishop Catrice on b4. We have c3, as one does when uh, faced uh, w with this Bishop Catrice on b4 move. Bishop to a5, and now uh, d4, striking the center. Magnus, no stranger to openings, he accepts the d4 pawn as well. Uh, and here we have castles. Now asking Magnus, what do you want to do here? So here you could do a lot of things. Knight G to E7 is the most solid approach or rather should be the most solid approach. Uh, D captures on C3 is a bit maybe too adventurous. Uh, but Magnus decides to go for D3. It's a very positional idea. Uh, that gives back a pawn where white if captures then the bishop uh, uh, moves back from this very active square and if queen captures then you get some very nice ideas like then you go knight g to e7 and uh, well this is just a, a beautiful position for black there's no way for white to actually take advantage of this you can never go for something like knight knight g5 because knight e5 attacks the queen the bishop defends f7 and so on so uh, of course um, uh, magnus knows this uh, that's why he went d3 but now bush, uh, queen to b3 putting pressure on f7 and uh, the bishop is still on a5 so Magnus cannot play knight to a5 so he, instead we have queen to f6 uh, defending the f7 pawn and now the immediate e5 and Magnus was already very impressed that uh, the mysterious gentleman is playing uh, with uh, with such ferocity uh, because uh, the pawn cannot be captured if the pawn is captured then uh, we get the simple rookie one and white wins there is no way to defend because if d6 then bishop g5 and after you move the queen you still have to keep an eye on the knight uh, doesn't really matter what you do queen f5 now we just capture we win a piece and that's it the, the piece cannot be recaptured if 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 it is then queen b5 check the bishop is under attack we're threatening the rook everything just falls even if uh, king to f8 then even queen c5 check king back and now rook captures on e5 just wins the game on the spot so uh, after e5 magnus says okay this is not a problem just queen g6 i'm up material i'm defending the d3 pawn uh, life is just great so rook to e1 uh, get, uh, getting the rook to the uh, soon to open up e file and now knight g to e7 magnus now ready to castle we have bishop to a3 now white's bishop pair is fully operational and here Ma while magnus could castle 
Uh, Magnus says, uh, all right, I see that your bishop pair is fully operational. I really like that. I want my bishop pair to be fully operational as well. And here Magnus decides to give back some material because that's how you always should play chess. Uh, he gives up the b pawn and now he wants to put his bishops on b6 and also on b7 and then uh, wreak havoc along this, uh, well, uh, beautiful diagonals. Uh, so uh, here we have queen captures on b5 and now rook to b8. A nice active rook, uh, move with the rook, queen to a4, and now bishop to b6. Now this bishop is a monster, and this bishop is coming to b7. Not, not that arrow, chess.com, not that arrow. Uh, knight b to d2, uh, and now uh, bishop to b7. Now the bishop pair is fully operational. Knight to e4 by Mr. Hoodie Guy here, and here Magnus goes for queen to f5. And the queen is excellently placed here. Uh, you can't really do all that much. The uh, f2 pawn is hanging, so White has to be very careful, but there is one move that uh, kind of poses a lot of problems for Magnus, and that's bishop captures on d3. Now the bishop aligns uh, itself with the queen, uh, some moves like, uh, whoa, not that, moves like knight to d6 check would open up an attack towards uh, uh, Carlsen's queen. So Magnus moves it with uh, queen to h5, and now uh, if black gets the castle, then black will be perfectly fine. Uh, so here, uh, Mr. MD starts a, a devastating attack. He plays knight to f6 check. Uh, forks the king and queen, and now the knight must be captured, otherwise Magnus needs to part with the queen. So g captures on f6, uh, e captures on f6, and now just rook to g8. Uh, Magnus is up so much material that he simply doesn't care, and uh, uh, on top of that, he's threatening queen captures on f3 because the g-pawn is pinned. Uh, and here we have a move that's uh, really, really weird. Uh, here, Mr. Hoodie Guy plays rook 8 to d1, and Magnus is just, what is this? This, I mean, this is... Uh, Nothing special, this is like the, the, the lamest move ever played, uh, even though there is one game that was played, uh, you know, that reached this exact same position uh, from uh, 1852, it was actually played in Berlin by some, uh, you know, uh, unknown person. Uh, and Magnus says, all right, thank you for the piece, I'm just going to play queen captures on f3, and I'm going to threaten checkmate here. So, uh, wh what is the plan here? Uh, get those $100,000 ready, uh, and uh, I mean, wh wh what's happening here? So here, uh, well, uh, white, if uh, white doesn't want to get checkmated, white needs to do something. So here, rook captures on e7 was played with check. Magnus said, all right, okay, uh, I, can, I can live with that. Just knight captures. Next move, I'm going to checkmate the white king. I'm going to win the money. Uh, for charity and I'm gonna you know continue with my day however uh, here Magnus missed a very very crucial idea uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to find uh, this uh, well amazing idea that this uh, totally unknown mysterious person uh, spotted uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, w w uh, one of the greatest, if not the, the greatest move, uh, the greatest uh, series of moves uh, ever played. Uh, and uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's actually queen captures on d7. But before playing this queen captures on d7 move, uh, our mysterious person removed the hoodie and uh, that was an even bigger shock to Magnus than was this queen sacrifice. Uh, because after uh, this gentleman removed his hoodie, uh, Magnus saw that it was in fact Max Deutsch, who he faced three and a half years ago. If you remember, the obsessive learner who uh, studied chess for one month uh, and then said that he was going to crush the world champion. Uh, here he returns and he's been training every day, every day for the past three and a half years to, to become the ultimate chess machine. He's been using the uh, the same strategy as Alpha Zero, uh, so he just started by knowing nothing and he just, you know, tried everything and, you know, if it works, it works. And this is how he came upon uh, su such great moves. And here, while removing his hoodie, he played Queen Capture on D7 and this is where Magnus saw what was happening. Uh, here the king is in check and you don't really have a good option because if you move the king then queen captures on e7 is checkmate and if you don't move the king uh, well then you have to capture the queen and if the queen is captured now comes bishop to f5 with a double check this is uh, uh, this is insane uh, white always have to has to move with tempo because uh, one one little move and you're getting checkmated everything is eyeing that g2 pawn the bishop the queen the rook so everything must come with with tempo so here the 
king is in check and here king to e8 magnus goes back problem is if you go king to c6 then bishop to d7 is checkmate all of these squares are now covered uh, by the by the bishop pair uh, this is the this is the ultimate bishop pair never in history has there been such a such a bishop pair maybe, maybe once you know in in berlin in 1852 but but that's it uh, so here, instead, after bishop to f5 check, king to e8 was played by Magnus, and now comes bishop to d7 check. King to f8, uh, or king to d8, doesn't really matter, and here uh, we have bishop captures on e7, uh, Max Deutsch delivers checkmate, and what a checkmate it is. Look at this. This is the... Uh, um, never has there been such a such a fully operational bishop pair that completely destroys black the pawn is covering g7 this is just uh, uh, an amazing game and you know uh, it, uh, such a game ne ne never ever ever happened this is this is just insane and uh, Max Deutsch got his revenge if you haven't seen the original video I've posted the original video some three and a half years ago uh, it will be the first link in the description below so do check it out Magnus really crushed Max uh, it took him only only a few moves and Max didn't really know what, what was going on but uh, it seems Max was uh, I don't know how he got the this good like in three and a half years it's like he was maybe using a hyperbolic time chamber to, to achieve uh, such power level but this is uh, I mean amazing stuff and uh, Magnus uh, as he is known to be a man of his word he said that uh, yeah, he definitely uh, will step down as the world champion in all time formats as Magnus is the world champion uh, in classical in rapid and in blitz and he will uh, he will make a formal petition to FIDE to make Max Deutsch the world champion in all formats so now after the candidates tournament uh, in in uh, in uh, April finishes uh, that the winner of the candidates tournament actually challenges Max Deutsch for the title instead of Magnus Carlsen uh, so yeah uh, really, really amazing stuff. And uh, Max Deutsch said that now that he truly mastered chess, he is done with chess. He, he, you know, he can't stand chess anymore. He just wanted to crush Magnus. Now he's going to turn his attention over to Tetris. He now wants to become the greatest Tetris player of all times. And uh, this is already uh, covered by all the uh, big media in the world. So if you still haven't seen it, you know, just Google it, check it out. I will put a link. Uh, the second link in the description below will be an official article by Chess24 about this game. Uh, so do check it out uh, as, uh, well, they, they've covered it in great length. Uh, so the first link, uh, the, the first game between Max Deutsch and Magnus Carlsen, I made a video on it three and a half years ago. The second link will be the article to Chess24. So yeah, really, really uh, devastating news. Uh, Magnus steps down as the world champion, and we'll see. We'll see what happens if he will honor the agreement, or will he continue playing? And maybe, but who would continue playing after such a game? After after facing such greatness, this could be, could be, uh, you know, the, the greatest game that, that there ever was and will be. So sort of an evergreen game. Uh, but yeah, really, really amazing stuff. We'll see what happens. So you know, stay, stay tuned. Uh, but yeah, that's that's uh, the the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Shyan Javid, uh, Chad Smith, Derek King, Eric Thomas, and Kunal Parikh for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.